Hi, everyone, and welcome to A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name is Donna Telling My Secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? Um, I'm doing a little bit loose, um, just because I wanted to use that term in a sentence. <laughs> it's the word of the day. I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Oh gosh. Happy Thursday, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Happy Thursday. Um, of course, this isn't actually a Thursday that we're recording this on, but it's coming out on a Thursday. You're just telling so. the kids that Mickey Mouse isn't real. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving away all the secrets. Oh but my uh, happy Thursday to everybody. Yeah. So if you guys haven't been following along, you should always catch our bonus episodes that are released sometime. Over this past week, mostly on Mondays. Mostly on Mondays. I, you know, I don't want to like have a strict uh, deadline for the bonus episodes because they are a treat to you. But um, yeah, mostly on Mondays and then on Thursdays, you'll catch our main episodes. Coco, what are you wearing tonight? Oh, I I am wearing um, computer cables um, because it's the computer first thing cables. I saw in front of me. When I was <laughs> and it's just like this cute, really cute dress. And I'm just like really feeling my fantasy. Yeah, it's like ah, it's, uh. um, in that case, I am wearing a computer chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just a rolling computer chair. I, I um, love it, especially yeah. the wheels. Yeah, thank and, you. In the really odd position you're sitting. Yeah, I mean, we have to get really creative with these looks. <laughs> so the funny thing about that, like, I bet people are like, people who joined in late on the joke are probably like, why in the fuck are they always talking about what they're wearing? Um, we. <laughs> made this like inside joke at the beginning uh that we have to get all glammed up to do these podcasts for you and it's such hard work when really <laughs> it's just a couple of idiots talking on mics oh, um yep, absolutely so we just wanted to make it like a recurring joke every episode that we have this like big old fantasy that we're done up in something um and we're gonna keep it going we are gonna keep it going because i find <laughs> it to be absolutely hysterical i also find it to be funny because like sometimes like when i prepared for it it's like a look i would love to have cap mm-hmm. commission and then other times i'm just like oh well this is what i can think of at the do you moment. have a favorite fake look that you've done we should actually oh make God. one of these <laughs> that'd be so I sh- we like so when we get more followers i think that we should like have a thing on our website that says what fake look would you like me to try to make and then i will take pictures in it oh gosh i hope i don't get this one computer chair donna's like i, I don't even i'm like doing a movement i don't even yeah. like because it's a podcast and you still can't see us um so we're so stupid we are so dumb but uh, i love us yeah so make sure to subscribe to us because like as we grow or whatever, you'll be the first people who are like, oh, I'm definitely choosing computer chair. Yeah. Def- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, tonight uh, we actually have another interview. Yeah. Which we're super excited about. Portland legend. Portland legend, which of course we'll talk about after the break. But yeah. as we keep doing these interviews, I hope that you all really enjoy and learn a lot of things about the Portland drag community from the yeah. people that we talk to. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the neat thing about living here is there's so many different characters characters that we've like met along the way you know people who have Mm -hmm. like lived very full different lives from our own and it's really interesting just getting to know their experiences and um, talking to them and kind of understanding like where they came from and what drag means to them absolutely um so without further ado donna how are you doing this evening oh you know coco i'll let you know after this brief commercial break when we bring on our guest do you wear t-shirts do you wear a face mask i sure as hell hope so do you put on your silly little t-shirt and your silly little face mask and wish you had something a little more out there yes even something dare i say matching girl yes duh then it looks like hunterdrips.com is exactly what you need At HunterDrips.com, socially relevant merch and apparel is up for sale. That's never for profit. 50 to 100% of every purchase is donated. I hear they carry matching shirts and masks with designs that say cute little slogans like defund the police, Black Lives Matter, and it goes over your nose. And even shirts and hats with your own pronouns on them. You know, things that are important. Oh, so you mean important. And almost all of it is donated? Yes, donated. And guess what? What? It's size inclusive too? Yes, up to 5XL. Why just make clothes for skinny people? It's all made by Queer Artist Girl. The creator of HunterDrips.com is trans, fat, lesbian, and the site also includes merch from other queer artists, including gay Portland rapper Jono. Listeners, head on over to HunterDrips.com and use the code SECRET for 15% off your purchase today. 
That's secret for 15% off your purchase at hunterdrips.com. It's a podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. Tune into what they tell you podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. You know what, Coco? I am just feeling absolutely overjoyed tonight because we have the lovely and talented Bolivia Carmichael's with us. How are you doing tonight, Bolivia? I am doing fantastic. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. It's so uh, great to have you on here. It is. It's absolutely a blessing because you are a local Mm -hmm. legend by all accounts. Um, Yeah, right. No, (laughs) Darcel Darcel is a legend. P-Dub, she's a legend. Uh, Patty Odora, these are legends. Yes, Henry. But I, no, sorry. No, oh, like, wow. no, it's just like I'm something. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So um, it makes me blush. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to tell you. Um, we wanted to start this off basically describing our first interactions with you because as we invite a guest on, we want to talk more about ourselves. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I remember meeting you um, in March of 2019. Uh, we, I went to see, cause I was going to be in pre-pump that Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and what happened was, so I went, um, the Thursday, it's the Wednesday, I think to just see what the bar looked like. Cause I had never been there before and you were doing, um, your DJing, but you were also, um, you had a wireless microphone and you were just like, cause there were people dancing. And so you're just like mm-hmm. walking around the room and just talking to people and, you mm-hmm. know, like making sure people buying drinks, having a good time. And, um, you asked me what my name was or something like that. And I said, oh, I'm a drag queen. I'm thinking about moving here. And then you said on the mic, oh, we have a visiting drag queen. Her name's Coco Jim Holiday. She'll be here for pre pop Fridays, hosted by, at that time, uh, Miss Anana and Flawless Shade. And like, (laughs) (laughs) went right into, went right into making sure that you knew that you had a place to play. And that that's fantastic that you're here and that you, uh, that you should feel welcome and that you should feel like this is my new home. This is, there are people that, that cared enough to do that. Just that little bit, you know? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I, that's I, exactly I really, how you made me feel too. Yeah. No, it's queen. It really was. I remember it was uh, that same night that she was in pre-pump. You were like, let me get you a drink and then let's get you bookings. Let's get you booked and and figure figure (laughs) your place out here. And it was super welcoming. And I just I absolutely like enjoyed that interaction with you because it it just made me feel so welcome and and happy to be here that it was the right choice to make. Well, good. I'm glad glad that that, I'm glad that that's the case. I'm glad to hear that. that. That makes my heart sing. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start digging into questions that are going to make you seem like less of a good person. So number one. <laughs> so, are these going to be the hard hitting questions? Or- <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going deep. Uh, so <laughs> let's just like, let's do, um, let's do the quick biography here. Like, so how long have you been doing drag and how did you get started with drag? Yeah. Um, I, got a, I got started at a place called the City Nightclub, which was an all ages nightclub uh, back in the day. And that was when I was 20. And so when I turned 21, I went over to the Embers Avenue and I performed there for nine years and uh, hosted the Friday night, ended up hosting the Friday night show. And then prior to that, the Wednesday night show and the Monday night show. Mm-hmm. And so uh, and so then from the Embers Avenue, I went and spent 17 years there uh, over at uh, CC Slaughter's nightclub. And mm-hmm. so we had done our show on Sunday nights for four years over at uh, four. <laughs> Uh, the fourth year that I've been working there, we uh, started doing the show there. And so we did the show there for uh, uh, some 14 or 15 years. Dang. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. It was really an amazing adventure. And, and I'm grateful for all of it. You know, I'm grateful for the time at Embers and I'm grateful for the time at Slaughter's and and then, uh, here we are today. <laughs> yeah, in a global pandemic. Yeah, what yeah. a time it is. Yes, what a time it is. It's, it's a very crazy time. It's an enlightening time, but it's a time that we're all going to get through and become better people on the other side of, no matter what. And yeah, uh, Definitely. And, and, and uh, we're also going to be smarter people on the other side of this, no matter what. And our eyes are going to be a little bit more open on the other side of this. What are some things that you've learned and taken away from this time? Oh, my goodness. I've learned a lot of respect for what I had, you know, for what was uh, right there in front of me, the love and support, the hugs, the, the uh, you know, 
uh, just the, the face-to-face contact with people, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's an experience that I'll never forget. And I, I can't wait to get back to, you know, it's, uh, so it's, it's taught me a lot of, um, when you didn't realize you had something and now you realize that once it's gone, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I miss, I miss the love and the, and the, and the contact with people and the walking through the club saying, Hey, what's up? How you doing? What? Get your chin up. Let's go grab a drink. You know, you know, Hey, my, my new friend here. What's your name? Anyhow? Oh, okay. My new friend, Lisa here needs a cocktail. We're going to get her one. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that, you okay. know, just, just kind of, you know, make the, uh, make, make them feel, make everyone feel welcome. That mm-hmm. nobody's turned away, you know, that nobody's, mm-hmm. uh, nobody's ignored no yeah I, absolutely understandable and the thing that's really cool about that is i think that that's like i know that it comes from a place of sincerity with you but it's mm-hmm. also a really good job of a host to make people feel included because you know like queer mm-hmm. people like it, we get really clicky so fast yeah. because we yeah. want to feel mm-hmm. safe in public and but then there will be somebody who's like oh i heard there was a gay bar and i just moved here and you know, like I, I, I want to go, but you know, I don't have my clique or my my tribe yet, and so it's like it's part of that dynamic of making people feel included in the show, you know. Yeah. And we're I the do. The new guy. the new guy. Come on in here. Let's find out yeah. who the new guy is. Everybody, we got a new guy. Hey, give him a big. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Exactly. I miss the hugs too. As a person whose love language is touch, it's very hard not having the hugs. I miss joint circles too. Passing the joint around. Oh, right. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. I haven't actually been sick in like 11 months. I just want to throw that out there. Really? I don't get close enough to people. So let's talk about, because you do celebrity impersonations when you do your drag. Can you go into about how you got started with that? How did you pick your characters and why you like doing it? Okay. Um, The Reba McIntyre one, uh, this queen that was working at um, at Darcel 15 and Company with us, uh, some time ago and I want to say it was Monique Moore or it was uh, I, I wish I remembered which one it was but she gave me this uh, hair and she goes here you could either be Reba McIntyre or Joy Behar and then she suggested Reba McIntyre and so I said okay I'll give it a, sh- I'll give it a shot you know and so <laughs> it, worked, it worked and then Kelly Cheval came came into town and uh, she was the Reba McIntyre of Cleveland, Ohio mm-hmm. and so uh, and so she she taught me quite a bit, and and so and so she finally handed the reins over or whatever, <laughs> the Reba <Right>. reins, <laughs> and uh, uh, so so that's how that one uh, fell into place. And I really enjoyed doing Reba McIntyre. She's easy to do. And then uh, let's see, Lucille Ball. I saw Misha Rockefeller do Lucille Ball a long time ago, and Misha Rockefeller is one of our uh, empresses. But anyhow, but Misha Rockefeller used to do uh, Lucille Ball, and that Lucille Ball act of Vitamina Benjamin, and I fell in love with that. And so when she moved away, I quickly snatched up on that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, but then that led me into Lily Tomlin and Ernestine Tomlin, Ooh. and. Uh, yeah, who is, she's the telephone operator from, from 1950 something. Oh, she's hilarious. There's mm-hmm. one ringy thingy, two ringy thingies, you know, I just loved it. And so, uh, so that led me to her. And then uh, Lily Tomlin also has these other uh, characters like Susie Sorority and, uh, and, and whatever, and so whatnot. And so, yeah, I, I like the spoken word, um, performance you know yeah yeah, yeah. i can definitely yeah. see that i have a question did you ever end up trying joy behar <laughs> down the line <laughs> i know i haven't but i i think i will now you should she's very, she's very popular since we're all sitting at home at 11 a.m right whoopie and, and i know Sarah and uh oh megan you can talk on and on just her heart take a breath girl oh my gosh and, and it's always comes back to being about her too <laughs> well my dad and me and i'm like okay during quarantine you were working um as doing your bolivia road shows so how did that come to be what was that experience like and um yeah just kind of talk about that for a second oh uh, the bolivia carmichael's road show was an idea that i had like a long time ago like well before the pandemic and um 
I, I, I had thought about, because I have this uh, Suzuki Vitara, and I've thought about, uh, I had my dad and my uh, stepbrothers make um, a platform up there on the back of it. And we used it in a parade, the Sweethearts of Portland. We used it in a parade a couple years, a few years back. And um, but I always had this idea of it. I could put the speakers on there, use it as a stage, pull up anywhere, do a drag show, a pop-up drag show, and just drive away, you know? Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be fun to go down to, like, a Pioneer Square or over to Hawthorne or, you know, you know, um, you know Belmont or, you know, uh, Woodstock would have been fun or, or up Mississippi, Mississippi Avenue, anywhere along in there would have been fun, you know? It's like uh, where the restaurants are, you know, the, uh, where there's outdoor seating. And so anyhow... Um, so that came up, a lot. that was my idea a long time ago, but with the, with the pandemic, I was like, well, shoot, I've done some shows online uh, right, after the, right after the pandemic hit uh, on March 15th. I, was, I did a couple of, a few shows online and I want to do those again, but, um, but it was going into summer and I was like, I got to get out of the house, you know, so, um, and I thought to myself, you know, they can't go to the drag show, but the drag show could come to them, you know? Yeah, and so, yeah absolutely. So I put the speakers up on the car and I hooked them up to a battery and, and everything's, you know, you just turn it on and you push play and you go and you get out of the car and you, you perform, you know, mm -hmm. you just right there. And, and a lot of times people would um, be passing by and they'd be like, what the, well, <laughs> what the heck is that? You know, and yeah. pull the kids in close, you know, hey, let's take a good look at that, kids. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I mean, every, every now and then you get somebody screaming something out their window, but, you know, that's that happens very, very rarely. But mm -hmm. um, but most people come by and they stop and they're like, Urch, and they take a look and they watch and they put a, you know, if they feel like putting a dollar in the budget, they're welcome to. But, you yeah. know, it, it's just been a lot of fun. It's That's been a really whole lot cool. of fun. That's yeah. really cool. And, uh, I, in November, I cut it off because I could, it's starting to get cold and wet. And yeah. Rainy, you know. Uh, oh, for sure. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so rainy here. So, uh, I'll bring it back uh, uh, around May or March, April, May. Yeah, around April or May when the weather really starts getting good. So, That's great. I'm sure it also yeah. is just like something that like made a lot of people happy during this time to see that mm -hmm. live entertainment, you know, like being oh, isolated. Yeah. The came out. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was cool. Everything, everybody would stop and watch. And it was a lot of fun. You have yeah. to have enough. It's got to be loud enough, but not too loud. You don't want to hurt their ears, you know. But um, <laughs> I wanted to ask, what is your proudest moment in your drag career? And what is your least favorite moment in your drag career? Okay, my most proud moment, I can tell you my least proud moment, but my most proud moment, I mean, there were pageants and <clears throat> there were pageants and there were parties and there were, you know, all these things. But I think uh, my most proud moment is helping people along their way. Yeah. You know? and, and whatever their way is, whether they're the people inside the club or the people outside the club. Yeah, I worked at CC Slaughters, or that's the people that employed me, but I had a bigger job to do than yeah. Right. That. Like, it was beyond it was bigger than me you know so there, there were a lot of very interesting proud moments and there were some not so proud moments uh one of my least proud moments was a misunderstanding about uh about a scheduling on the in the show one night you know like mm -hmm. on the list of, of which performer goes next because i thought it was going to be a good idea to in the three sets or four sets it was to like in the first set do it in this order but in the second set, change up the order. And then the third set, change up the order again. And so this performer thought that they were supposed to be following somebody. And then it was somebody else next. And she thought that I had skipped her on purpose. And I hadn't. And I let my, uh, I, 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 I couldn't seem to get my explanation across that you're looking at the list wrong. Now look here where it says... And she was, and she was very mad at me. And so I took the papers and I said, "Well, fuck you, then." You know, and I kind of swiped her across the, foot and oh, she was very upset and rightly so. And so that was one of my least proud moments. And uh, so there you go. And I've apologized. And so, and then uh, one of my other least proud moments was I missed the countdown on New Year's Eve, and because uh, I couldn't. Well, regardless, I missed the countdown on New Year's Eve. You know, the whole ten, not yeah. eight. So, you know, this needs to happen, and I missed it. Yeah. From that from that year on, I never missed it again because I was always so 
uh, horrified that of the one year that I did miss it, and it uh, it always yeah. So every nah. every year, every years now, I don't miss it. Even this year, when I wasn't <laughs> down there, I stood up in my house and I said ten. Nine, eight. <laughs> I did, I did, and I went outside the door and I said, "Woohoo!" <laughs> I think I had a time too where I, I missed the countdown. Uh, not because I I think I actually missed it. I just don't think I was mentally there. It was early on in my drag career, and there might have been Xanax involved. So, <laughs> <laughs> don't do drug those kiddos unless they're prescribed. Why did you continue doing drag? Why have you continued to do drag after? Because, you know, some of us burn out after a couple of years. Why have you done it for so long? Because uh, it's the easiest and most fun job in the world. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. <laughs> um, because, because Bolivia Carmichael's, uh, as me, uh, I do things that I, you know, when I'm all dressed up, you know, mm-hmm. I... I get to do things that I don't necessarily get to do or act like as and when I am as Daniel, but I'm both, this, it's all the same person, you know? So uh, I just got my hands out here. <laughs> it's all the same person and Daniel in Bolivia that is. And uh, so I don't know. I don't know why have I been doing it all these years because it's fun. It's easy. It's, it's, uh, yeah. it's what I do, you yeah. know? That's what I've chosen as my career. You know, I've chosen to make Bolivia Carmichael's uh, uh, be the career, you know, because uh, it's fun. I've worked at banks. I've, I've, I've waited tables. I, and I would, I would go wait tables again. And I, I would go be a bank teller if I, if, you know, if that's what's available to me, you know. But I'm, I'm committed to making Bolivia Carmichael's work. Because so, it's what I do. It's, what it's, 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 I love it. I what love advice it. would you give for someone who wants to try to make drag their full time career? Uh, be patient. Be patient. Be persistent. Go show up at everything. Keep smiling. Don't don't get all caught up in in uh, in, in clicks and drama. So, you know, uh, be there for everyone. Don't. Uh, I don't know. I'm not saying don't get. Uh, too emotionally involved that's what it is don't get too emotionally involved with the drama of things you know um but but be there and have an open heart and an open mind and uh but but offer your assistance where assistance is needed um jump in fill the fill the empty gap you know and uh and and just keep going you know keep following your heart following your dream whatever 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 it is that you're wanting to do keep following that don't let anything ever stop you just keep going uh how would you describe the portland drag scene just in your own words very talented very talented um how would i describe the portland drag scene Mm -hmm. eclectic uh mixed all, all sorts of everything and it's all very entertaining how's it evolved uh, over the years uh it hasn't it's always it hasn't. the same <laughs> <laughs> i mean there, there are queens that come and queens that go and queens that we fall in love with and uh and, and not just queens but kings you know yeah when i say that, the entertainers uh we fall in love with some and we don't we don't quite get some and and uh or whatever you know I, no, I mean that's that's speaking as we as a whole but you know it's all up to each and every one of us individually uh what we like and what we don't like you know not every I've always said not everybody's gonna like me and that's okay that's perfectly okay because I'm not gonna like everybody you know <laughs> and, and that's perfectly okay yeah. it's okay to it's okay to be liked and it's okay to not be liked because, you know, like I said, frankly, there are people out there that I don't particularly like. And that's okay. That doesn't mean I have to make their life hell. That doesn't mean I have to go out of my way to sneer at them or to give them the evil eye or to yeah, right. you know, look, you know, look them up and down or anything like that. That's not, that's, but I know that I don't care for that person. And so I will just not really be around that person it's not i'm not going to run away from that person but and i'll nod you know you know i acknowledge the fact that somebody's 
made eye contact with you same way you would with anybody else on the street you know but but i just know that they're yeah and it's okay to not be liked i'm okay with that that's yeah. so, that somebody might not like me so yeah, much I believe you with that um, so another question that I have for you is what did you feel when the pandemic, the global pandemic start? Like what, how did you cope? What did you think? How did you process? Oh, I, was I was shocked. I mean, I was shocked and yet not surprised at all. I think the, uh, the Sunday night before, uh, March 15th or whenever, whatever it was, uh, I said to the audience at the very end of the show, you know, when you're saying you're nice and thank you very much for coming and we hope you'll come again to see us again. La, 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 la. You know, I, what I said was, thank you very much and I'll see you next year. <laughs> and I was just trying to be funny. You yeah. Know, I, uh, but I knew that we were that close and, 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 then it, and then it happened. And so, I mean, I, I've, yeah, I was shocked. But what did I do to cope? I went right to work on uh, building a studio in my basement. Not building, like, hammer and nails. No, I mean, like, hanging, hanging up the crap to make it look like it's a studio. It's like, well, the show must go on, you know, because the show must go on. Yeah. yeah. We're one of the first queens locally that I saw to jump on the live shows. And it made me so happy when I got to see that, you know, we got to see some entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really loved tuning in when I was still on yeah. Facebook. <laughs> Uh, what are you on now? What are we on? We're on just uh, Instagram, and 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 this podcast is all over. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. all right. Now I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> I do want to ask you the one hard, sad question. Like, tell me about okay. your thoughts, impressions, and feelings about when you found out that Slaughter's was closing. Um, <sighs> I was. Uh, hmm. Again, I was in shock. You know, it it was like when. Um, when they <clears throat> said that we're not going to be having you girls back for a while, you know, I was in shock. And so uh, it took some time to comprehend, you know, not comprehend, but it took some time to get over that shock. And, um, you know, just, you, you just, you move on. I mean, you go and you empty the dressing room, you know, it's, that was a shocking uh, period for me. Uh, after we emptied the dressing room and I vacuumed it out and I closed the door, I went home and I threw up. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I was just, I was physically moved. You know, I mean, I was, yeah, yeah. I went into shock for a little bit and when I pulled, it, pulled myself together and said, all right, what's next? You know, what are you going to do? Goodness. Well, I'm sense. waiting for waiting for Darcel to open. But I'm waiting for the world to open back up. You know, right? Yeah, I'm waiting for the world to open back up, and then we'll go back to work. You know, not to work, but we'll go back to doing the greater work that we're supposed to be doing. Is what I mean. You know. Yeah. So, what does a full time drag artist do when they don't have the ability to do drag? Oh, you bake you. <laughs> <laughs> You go online. You you uh, you do. So, I was working with artists in auctions for. I, I've done a couple of auctions with them, and uh, fundraising events with them. Nice. Uh, yeah. So I. Uh, so yeah, that's what you do. You you go to work. And you, you you keep working. Yeah. I mean, look, poison. Poison's got her face on a on a, uh, <laughs> on, a on a bench for at the bus stop for crying out loud. And you bounce back. You you twist. You turn. You. You pivot, you figure out what needs to be done next. Yeah. Because it's it's what is a uh, what does a restaurant owner do to uh, pivot during a pandemic? They do outdoor seating. They do to go orders. What is what you know? Every everybody that has you know, whether it's a drag queen or a, a full time drag queen or a full time lawyer or a full time this or a full time, we've all had to figure out what to do. You know. Right. And yeah. that's what I've done. <laughs> right. And how do you, so what is the advice that you could give the kids for, because you're always seem to be in really like positive spirits. So what would, what advice would you give for people to like, you know, keep their head up during this time? Mm -hmm. Just you're, you're how old? You can do it. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> Let's go. You're fine. You just, <laughs> just wear the mask, cover your face, cover your cough from the crook of your arm. Uh, wash your hands, keep the social distancing, follow all the CDC guidelines until you can get your vaccine. Okay? It's not a business. 
It's it's coming. I know it's not here soon enough. I realize that, darling. I got it. I know it should have been here or this or that or the other. And I got that. But we are still here. You've made it this far. Just keep pushing through. And then you'll get your vaccines. And then we can hug each other again. And we can go, oh, my God, I missed you. And you can go see your mom and go see your dad and go see your auntie and your uncle and your nieces and your nephews and grandma and grandpa. And you can... Go give them big kisses right on their wet lips if that's what you want to do. You know? <laughs> okay, a little far, but you get my point. <laughs> you get it, you know? Just, you, you're, you're strong. You are strong enough that you have made it this far. To be damned that you're going to let something at this last moment bring you down, you know? I mean, at this last moment, this is the final stretch. You can see the uh the finish line you can see that checkered flag you just gotta keep pushing baby you can't stop you cannot stop this is not the time you just that's that's what that's what i would say to somebody anybody who's having a hard time getting through this shut up you've already gotten through this far you're pretty pretty (laughs) damn special to me pretty strong to me So a little bit on the sillier side, I, I've been asking all of the drag artists this as well. I said, if you had to get into a bar, if you got into a bar fight, which drag entertainers in this city would you like to have to have your back? Yes. Oh, this is an important, important question. Okay. The- <laughs> if I was going to get in a bar fight, Shamik goddamn bold is going to be out right there. First and foremost, Shamik <laughs> bold. I got to get her on my side. So, you know, that's my sister. And so, uh, ooh, I would want to have Henry. I want to have Henry in. I need to. I need to have both of you in. That's going to. That's going to. Ooh, ooh, I need Avon Lady to be stand on standby in her ambulance because Avon Lady is the uh, first responder. She drives an ambulance. I need oh, Avon yeah. Lady right there, right there, waiting for anything. Okay, let's see. Let's go on. <laughs> Honey Bee's gonna be fixing her hair. She doesn't have time for this. No, <laughs> no. <nah. laughs> yeah, um, let's see. Who else? Uh, Let's see, Kitty Carriol. Kitty Carriol, I just I need you to stand back and look pretty, honey. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> you just stand there. You're too much has gone into this creation, this beautiful work of art. Uh, let's see. Yes. Um, wow. Let's see. Who else? Oh, God. Name some of us. Lana Hart. She's cute and fun, but no. Uh, I, yeah, she'd probably fight. No, she has, I've seen her be mad. Yeah, I want her to <laughs> seen her fight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Isaiah, oh Lord, Isaiah and Johnny, everybody will back up. Yeah. <laughs> so this fight will be done when they walk in because they're going to either, somebody's going to get hurt or we're all going to go, oh, what, are, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're all going to take yeah. a big deep breath and just love each other. So just have some have a meditation together. session instead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no fighting, baby. Here, just here. everybody calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the other funny question that I like to ask, uh, is so out of all the hidden rules of drag, what is one rule you do not like or wish could go away? Okay. What one rule I do not like, or that I wish it could go away. Let's see. Uh, and if you're not, if you're not wearing nails, you're not doing drag. Yeah. I guess that's the only one that I got because I don't wear nails, honey, buddy. I yeah. Mean, I wear, I wear the hips. You got enough out of me, okay? I wear the hips and the tits. And you, you need more? Come on. Yes, of yeah. course you need more. I guess if, I know, I know what the answer would be is that if, if you want to be polished, bitch, you better be wearing the nails, okay? But I guess I'm just unpolished. And I'm just have to <laughs> I see no problem with rocking some polish instead of rocking a nail, you know? <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. And, and I, I go to, you know, I have to go potty or something and try to put everything back off. to where everything belongs, you know, and you find them there later, it's all imprinted on your skin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I think that's the, I guess that's the one. I yeah, yeah I appreciate that answer because I, I only wear I only wear the nails during pageants, obviously, because I have tons right. of dressers to help me get in and out of things. And, but like mm-hmm. when I'm at a regular drag show, especially I mean, after I gained weight, running up and down those stairs mm-hmm. at CC's was <laughs> difficult. And then like having to like step around with some nails is they're just gonna pop off anyway as I'm trying to claw out of my mm-hmm. fat suit that I'm wearing. With <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, how was it having a private dressing room at Slaughter's? That wasn't on my list. I just want to know. It was nice because I didn't have to uh, sh- schlep all this stuff back and forth from the house. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was better to just turn around and go, okay, what do I want to wear tonight? Or what do I need? Or what do you need? Or, you know, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's needed? <laughs> it's, all, it's all right here, you know? Yeah. That so would nice. it would know. be nice. It was nice to have my stuff locked up. I, it was nice to make sure that I, uh, I felt like my stuff was secure in there, at least. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. I bet. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, because you know, you know how, you know how, for some reason, how there's always got to be somebody with sticky fingers and somebody's messing with somebody's and somebody's grabbing somebody's something. Tips or missing something. Or, yeah. And then you see somebody wearing it and you're like, oh, girl, out over here with it. And it's like, oh, no, we can just stop all that now if we can not push it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh that's so funny you were such a delight to talk to by the way yeah we uh, missed you i miss you <laughs> i miss you guys let's go we gotta get our we gotta get our vaccines and get i vaccine. know yeah as soon as i can i'm gonna get mine because i am i am done with this <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah. what is, what is the next five years for bolivia carmichael's all right. Well, they're going to be a lot better than the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, what do the next five years look like for Bolivia? Oh, my God. Oh, I, I'm so glad you asked. Thank you. We're going to see. I know that it's going to involve doing some more road show, and it's going to involve getting back to back to some semblance of normalcy. Uh, and doing some more indoor shows once we all get our vaccine. But you know, that's so the next five years. I'm I'm hoping that they're going to be beautiful and bright. You know, I have great hopes for them. It's been such a treasure having you on tonight, and um, it's yeah. been a real pleasure to be hanging out with you guys. Yeah, so yeah. We should do this more often. We should. We should. And I think um, people should get together and do this more often. Yeah, yeah. Or or we could. I remember to one of the first. Uh, experiences i had when i met you um we all sat down and you're like we should do a seance and um so we did a seance to our straight roommates uh sex life because it was dead oh oh and how did that go did it work (laughs) it's still dead it's still he never reconnected let me just say i understand (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) well um Yeah, we absolutely adore and appreciate you and thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you for having me and I'll see you very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 This has been another episode of HM of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at the Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast. Com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.